Okay, now we're ready to uh, begin a uh, scan job. And the first step that we want to do in our process is to scan. So we click on our scan, and this opens up our uh, scanner interface. Okay, And you'll notice that here you have your camera view. And note that it has a ruler around it okay um, so that you can get a sense of the ruler uh, here under one of the things that you want to do here is definitely give your file a name so uh, we'll we'll do a scan underscore NT01 okay so that your files have logical names okay and we have uh, we have an auto scanner. We don't have a multi drive, uh, so you'll almost always default to auto. Uh, positioning, you can either do a single scan, uh, which will scan one at a time, or also you can do a bracket, which does a 180 bracket, three scans in a 180 bracket, and also you have a 360 scan. We'll talk more about this in a second. But let's get our object set up in the window first, because right now we see our object is displaced in the window. And you'll note that you have three scanning modes. The scanner is currently set to wide mode. And in wide mode, your, your object should be approximately 25 inches away from your scanner, okay? Uh, our object is quite small, so I'm going to put this in macro mode, okay? And in macro mode, the object uh, should be somewhere between seven, somewhere be about nine and a half inches is the ideal uh, distance, should be centered on about nine and a half. And I try to make that uh, right at the front or in the center of my object. You notice that when we change modes, the object came into focus. Now, one of the things that I like to do, I always like to uh, rotate my scan around once I place it in the window to make sure that it fits there properly and it doesn't fall out of the uh, view of the scanner as it spins. And I sort of adjusted this one fairly well. But sometimes uh, you may want to go over to your object and adjust its position to center it uh, in the scan window, and that's very important. Now, in, in single mode, you, it will do single scans, and each one of these modes sort of determines the type of family in that the scans will end up in. So let's go over here to 360. Here at 360, you have a number of divisions. Uh, I generally either do 12 divisions uh, normally. Uh, basically, it takes that number. Uh, Three, it divides by 360, and that's the uh, that'll give you the uh, the amount of rotation that it does between each scan, okay? And or you can bump that up to 16, okay? But I want you to also see uh, that there's a corollary here between your divisions, your points, okay, per uh, per square inch, cubic inch, and also the time and memory that it that it takes. Generally I either do 12 or 16 when I'm scanning an object, okay, and and if I need a lot of information within a certain uh, range, like if I needed a lot more information between like that, those two areas, then I'd do a series of singles to capture that, then align them, okay. Your points uh, right here, this determines the fidelity of your, your uh, scan. Okay, and here uh, you have like 7,000 points uh, per, per, per square inch, okay? And most of my work is done in SD. Most of your scan work should be done in SD in the middle. Here, you note that as you go lower over here in the quick scan mode, um, even at 12 scans, okay, even at 12 scans in this mode, uh, it, it, uh, it, it, the amount of time, it's 27 minutes, it seems to be uh, quite a lot there for, for, for that. Um, and your memory is only 7%. Let's bump this up to, uh, let's bump this time up over here to um, SD mode. In SD mode, that's 29 minutes, okay? But you notice that you use 52% uh, 50 of your memory. Now, if you go into the HD range, which where you do a lot of your high-resolution scanning, okay, uh, you're getting 67,000 points 
per square inch, 20, 29,000 points per square inch, but you'll notice that your time is now at over an hour and you've also used up 52 percent of your memory if you get up into the high range of this once again we're over an hour for your scan time and you've used up all of your computer memory so under normal working conditions you want to put this in the middle SD mode 7,000 points right there in the middle uh, if you want to need a little bit more you can go a little higher there but you note that once again you're taxing your computer memory once you do that uh, depending upon the color of your object the target object you can either go light neutral or dark and that will set the um, that will set the uh, tone of the uh, exposure for the camera more than anything else uh, and also, sometimes uh, you can actually put powder on your objects to make them flat, which is which is sort of the goal. As I said before, your camera works in three modes. You have uh, macro, you have uh, wide, and you have extended. Now, you notice that in wide mode, your camera, uh, the ideal range is about 25 inches. And in the lab, we have a couple sticks that you can use to quickly uh, set that distance. Okay. And in extended mode, the camera can go out as far as uh, 40 inches. 40 inches. But once again, the ideal range, the ideal capture range is about 25 inches, but it just extends it out a little further and wide. I found that the ideal size for most objects when you're uh, scanning, that I like to scan, I, th I think about uh, four and a half to four to six inches is an excellent size because you can capture your data at a very uh, high resolution uh, and get very and get very accurate scans. Now this is a really small object. As you can see from the ruler, this object's about two and a half inches uh, by about two inches. So it's a very small object. Hence we're uh, scanning it in macro mode. And that completes the overview of the scan window. Uh, one last thing, when, when you're ready to begin your scanning process, all you need to do is to hit the start button and that starts your scan.